people, our final act of the night. Give it up for the wonderful Suresh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Suresh, how you doing, people? Oh uh, yeah, thank you. That's great. Uh, don't get too enthusiastic uh, too early on. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk about stuff. I'm gonna talk about myself and try to. And, and if it all goes, if it all goes wrong, I'm gonna have to just go back to the same old shit I always do. So, uh, so uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. So I. Uh, like, uh, you're probably looking at me and thinking, yeah, he's a small, cute, kind of little pacifist kind of guy. And uh, I am, you know, but uh, the thing is, uh, I, I, I actually used to work out, and, I, and, and, and actually I got huge, I became really huge. And uh, in fact, I got, um, I got too huge, so uh, I had to work myself back in again. <laughs> True story. Because I'm not like these guys you see walking down the street, these huge guys with their muscles. I think I think that's just re repulsive, you know, because uh, I prefer to keep my muscles on the inside of my body um, where they belong. Yeah? You know what I'm talking about? And, and girls are into that now. They're not into these huge guys with their disgusting muscles hanging out. It's just so obvious and, uh, you know, and tasteless, so uh, I uh, uh, also I I, I I I actually worked as a dairy farmer. A lot of people don't know this about me. I had a um, what some people might say was a not entirely um, successful career as a dairy farmer, uh, which lasted for one day. Um, I uh, I bought some land, I got some grass, and I got like a whole bunch of cows, you know, all the stuff you need. Uh, they're all the technical terms in dairy farming, grass, you know, cows. And I moved on to the, the farm and became a farmer, but on the first day of being a farmer, uh, about an hour into it, it suddenly occurred to me that I fucking hate cows. <laughs> And I could see that this would cause conflict sort of in this line of work, so I left them there to die and uh, drove back to the city where I, I ordered a chai latte with soy milk and... Uh, now I know that in a lot of people's eyes, uh, this doesn't make me the greatest farmer in the world. And uh, in other people's eyes, it makes me a cow murderer who deserves to be locked away. But uh, can I just say in my defense, right, that I'm young, you know, I didn't want to be tied down to 560, 560 moaning, annoying, needy, bloody cows following you around, looking at you with their big, stupid, needy eyes, moaning. I'm a cow, help me, you're the farmer. And then you just wanna, you just wanna punch one, so you punch it. And then when you punch a cow, he just stands there, he doesn't even fight back, he just keeps looking at you with these big videos. So you punch it again, you know. And then you punch another cow for a bit of, of, of variety. And then you punch a few more, you know. And then you just, like, after half an hour, you just go, I can't spend the rest of my life doing this, you know. This is just stupid. I can't stand in a field, like, punching cows all by myself. I guess dairy farming is just not for me. <laughs> so I left and uh, went back to the city and I ordered some coffees and continued my sparkling career uh, writing songs about the the inexplicable uh, um, yeah, mystery of why I still don't have a girlfriend. Why is that? Don't have a g Hey, look, me, I don't have a girlfriend, right? You know? I mean, David Helfgott has a girlfriend, you know? I mean, what's with that? What's with that? So... And I started to think, maybe I'm never going to get a girlfriend, you know? Because I know that in theory I could have a girlfriend, but, but then again, um, like in theory, communism works, right? And we all know it doesn't fucking work. It's never gonna work. And every time, a, and every time, like a communist leader turns into like a Stalin-esque, um, uh, 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 like dictator, and starts killing their own people, my chances of getting a date on Saturday night look slimmer and fucking slimmer. <laughs> I know that, that after I die, I'm going to be standing in heaven next to Karl Marx 
and I'm going to be standing there and he's going to be going, it should have worked, you know, from each according to their ability or whatever the fuck it is. It should have worked. It's communism. It could have worked. And I'm going to be standing there going, yeah, and I have such great hair. What's with that? Why didn't I get a girlfriend? <laughs> It's one of those mysteries. So, uh, also, sometimes I get this feeling, this vague feeling that I've been somewhere before, and or I've done something before, that, 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 that I'm doing right now, but like I can't remember when or where I did it, and then I start thinking that it's just a dream, and then I start feeling all kind of really lost and kind of spaced out for a few minutes. That happens to me all the time. But I never get deja vu. <laughs> Because I'm not a pretentious asshole. <laughs> People with their, you know, with their pretentious French words and stuff. And uh, so, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I, uh, I met. This is a true story, right? Just like all my stories. I, uh, I met, I met Stephen Hawking. True story. And we had this long, intense, intellectual discussion, right? He had so many questions. And, um, <laughs> and I said, you know, Steve, I said, you know the theory you have about, um, um, like, you know, uh, the things which are called wormholes, which are like these black holes which are connected and you travel through them. Um, and you could travel, and according to you, you could travel to uh, a parallel universe if you travel through a wormhole. Uh, well, considering that no one has ever actually proved that wormholes actually exist, how do you come to the conclusion that travelling through a wormhole could cause a person to go into a parallel universe? And he said, well, Suresh, I just tried to think up what would be the coolest possible thing Thing that could happen if you travel through a wormhole. And I said, Hawks, that's that's really scientific of you, Hawks. That's that's great. But wouldn't it be much cooler if you traveled through a wormhole and you arrived at a party where it was just you and a whole bunch of of really attractive women who were into astrophysics. And uh, and he said, yes, Rush, that is a much cooler theory. So it's going to change your theory. So, you know, I don't want to blow my own horn or anything, but changing the face of science, one scientist at a time. And that's, that's, a, true, that's a true story. Uh, no, hang on. No, I just made it up. That's right. So, um... So anyway, yeah, this is all new stuff. It's just like the B-side stuff now. It's not the A-side stuff. You have to come on a different night to get all the gold, to get all the... Because usually it's all real. Yes, it's so funny. You should... Yeah, you should come sometime. I'm doing funny stuff I've actually done before and stuff. But tonight, it's just all the... Because you people obviously didn't pay enough or whatever. I don't know what the story, I don't know what the story was. But Joan just told me to get up here and do risky stuff, which may or may not be funny. I don't know, who knows? So, uh, so, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, uh, I went to uh, a massage parlor and uh, the, I asked for a massage and the, the girl said, do, 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 do you want a happy ending with that? And uh, so I said, uh, yeah, sure, you know, why not? And so she gave me the massage and then afterwards, we fell in love and got married. And, uh, now we live in a big castle with lots of beautiful little kids. And that's a true story as well. That happened, that happened to me this morning. So. I do a song yet. Yeah. Also, I want to point this out. I got this. Um, um, is anyone here into, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, yeah, Ryan Adams is a singer called Ryan Adams, yeah, are there any Ryan Adams fans here? No, no, well, I have to do the, I have to do the joke anyway, because, you know, I, I took all the trouble of bringing the prop, so, um, I'm into all that. But I got this Ryan Adams, there's a songwriter called Ryan Adams, I got this shirt, right, it's incredibly rare, right, it's a Ryan Adams shirt. And uh, it's like a misprint because it has a because it has like a B on the front of Ryan Adams. Yeah, it must be worth a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. 